Hey, wonderful people of YouTube. This is my Victron Solar. It took me about 15 days to build and about a budget of about, let's say a thousand dollars. So let me give you a quick tour. If you guys look at my previous video, you would see the installation, the build, framing, me going through all the dip, trying to build this by myself in 110 weather, Florida. When I mean it's scorching, it is scorching. The coolest area in my backyard is about a hundred. Just the floors themselves are about a hundred. Let's take a quick look at the surrounding. Okay, so here is the solar shed. This is what we are built. This is what it's looking like. This is how it's going. So if you look previously, you would know that we added our multi fans. We have two exhaust fans that will exhaust battery heat and Victron from this side. We kept as much wood as possible inside here just to give it that nice cool feeling inside here. This shed is insulated. There will be an air conditioner that we will be placing here. So in totality, we're going to be having 16 batteries, but at the moment we have 12 at 280 amps at 12.8 volts. So I think this is about a total of, uh, if I'm not mistaken, let me see, it's about 40 one to 42,000 watts of storage and we have near about 10,000 watts of uh, solar power. So what we're gonna have here is three stack of our solar, uh, our, our, our battery. And then we're gonna have our distributor right next to the, uh, what is this, the, uh, the low center. We're gonna have our Victron Quattros on top, which will be nice. Let's make sure you guys are able to see this. Okay, let's uh, let's get a uh, nicer upper view. So we'll have our Victron Quattros up top, our distributor right under. On the left side, we're gonna be having our M, our M what is it, MTT or MTs, which is the solar distributor. And then right next to it, we'll have our distributor box. So we're able to put multitudes of solar panels to one M. And then uh, let's see if there's anything else that we're missing, which I do think. Yes, we have our uh, Serbo GX. We have our monitoring screen, but that's to be inside the serbo gx will be in here will be placed under the distributor as well so right at the process right now what we're doing is we're going to be connecting these batteries these batteries are actually not connected to the home itself i just purchased these off of amazon it cost me about uh 375 dollars per battery so i was able to get them for about 13 1400 dollars so we're going to connect together get them at the correct voltage so they match so they match the ones inside the house and then we're going to go from there to add the secondary shelf build the black the negative the positive wire that goes on top that will connect to the secondary and then we're going to go from there build that and then start adding the uh, connectors that will hold up the Victron Quattro because the Victron Quattros are about 70 to 80 pounds each so we're looking at about 150 pounds so we're going to be putting them right to the board and then we're going to have a metal base plus wood going across for support so that's how it's looking now let's start the process of uh, getting the wiring and we'll go over here in a shade for that Ta-da! right here these are our connectors these are three out lug let me show you a massive beautiful deal so this is the three out wire as you see here, these are not the sheared version. I get a lot of mixed reaction. People say, oh, you need to get the ones that have, you know, a thousand, you know, strands. And then I get people who say, hey, no, it's it's best to get, you know, thicker. My thing is this, thicker costs more than the strand. So I can only guess that the thicker version is better for conductivity. So the tools that we'll be using for this process to build these right here, We'll be using the three out lugs. I was able to get, I think, eight to 10 of these for about 10 bucks on Amazon. We have our lug covering just, to, uh, you know, for conductivity. We have our massive strand is about, I think, 25 or 50 feet. I think it's 25 feet to cover over all the wiring. I just, um, there's little nicks on the wiring, just little micro nick, and I don't want nothing to be, you know, like a piece of water or anything like that to go in there and short circuit the whole system. We have our Wagner heat blower right here. We have our J40 cutting tool. This right here will allow you to cut massive amount of wire. I mean, you can cut uh, negative 50 gauge wiring. I think this might've cost me maybe 30 bucks. And then this bad boy right here, this is a hydraulic crimping tool. It goes all the way up to, uh, if I'm not mistaken, six alt wire. So you're able to crimp up the six alt wire. Right now we have only the three alt. I mean, look how clean these cuts are. Beautiful, beautiful cut. Okay, so what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna start a, let's uh. Okay, I want you guys to get a. Ah. Okay, so I want you guys to get a visual cue on how I do this process right here. So from the lug hole to the lug hole is about four inches, one and eight. So what I like to do just to start off the process, I'll cut a five inch, so we'll go here. Actually, skipping the whole process. So we'll start at three and a half inches. 
we have the three and a half inches right there. Okay, let's uh, let's make the uh, hole close as possible. If you guys only knew how bad I am sweating right now, my hat is perspirating all over me. Okay, so we have a good connection right now. Okay. Okay, we are going through. Uh, boom, okay. Right here, we have two great clean connects. So what I'm gonna do is this. I wanna cut one side about three fourths of an inch and I'm gonna place the first lug over it, crimp it, and then I'm gonna measure from that lug to see where the other side of the lug is should be. Oh yeah, I forgot. I had this eye crimp tool as well from Amazon. I think I might've purchased it for $10. I do like, you do get multiple blades. I think I, I, and just in this one right here, they gave me three blades. So what you wanna do is you wanna press hard and then spin, okay? Okay, we're in there. You can feel once it touches the metal. And then we'll take our regular Klein Tools razor blade and then we'll just go and take the, uh, it has this thin plastic shear on it. And then we'll go one more time, not too deep, just to kind of scar it a little, okay? Boom, and as you see, the plastic filament that was around it comes right off. Okay, as you can see here, this lug fit per perfectly on it. So what we'll do is we're gonna tighten this onto the on section. We're gonna get it to its closest area. Once, okay, right here. Uh, we'll get it to its closest area. We'll put this, actually, give me a second. Okay. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay. Let's bring this to the closest area. Put this inside. I don't know if you guys are able to see this. Let's bring this as close as possible. People. Okay, and we are crimped. <laughs> okay, it is crimped. Wait, I think we got a little bit more space. We can do it one more time. <sighs> oh man, I almost hit myself. Let's finish. <sighs> Okay, we're golden. Look at this beautiful crimp right here. What a beaut. This is the final product. This is how we want it to look right here. So what I might do, just to add a nice look to it, I might just put it like this so I know the red side and the black side. I mean, let's be real. We know which side is what. Just to give it a nice, a nice look. I'm thinking I might cut these in half and then just put it on this side right here. That'd be really, really nice. Actually, I think I could do it right there. So this is all we need. The middle, the end should be 4.1. Four, four inches, four inches. Give me a second real quick. Let me just get a nice little measurement. I just want to get it close to it. I have enough room in there. So the F, the F on this thing will be where it needs, um, the lug hole needs to be. So I have my handy dandy pencil. So we'll put that there, boom. And it needs to be cut right here. Okay, let's start this process one more time. This is the line that we need to cut. I'm trying to get to here as best as possible. Okay, we'll start cutting this bad boy. Okay, this side's right here, cut off. We need about mm, to the W, a little ahead of the W. So about three fourths of an inch, all right? And then I'll make a slit. Take the pla plastic sheathing, boom, boom. We have the other crimp right here, and then we'll crimp this bad boy up. We want to get it as close as possible. Uh, okay, put this bad boy in, make it straight. Okay, uh oh, do it nice and slow. Okay, we're golden. Woo! We have our secondary crimp. This is how it looks right here. It's not a finished product, as you guys can see. This is our secondary crimp right here. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this, we're gonna cut ourselves about two inches worth of this. Okay, now, boom, we turn this bad boy on. And then the process comes of shrinkage. Let me move my hat, don't wanna electrocute this crap out of my hands. Tighten this bad boy up. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna be placing these things, what they would call in, what, parallel. These are gonna be in parallel, and then the other three will be in series. So we're gonna take the lug nut, 
for these. Mind you, these are brand new units, guys. These are brand new spanking units. We're gonna have our negative. Uh, okay, and then we're gonna have our positive. Okay, hopefully I don't get a shock. Let's move this over. Uh, hopefully no big bang, okay, nothing. Let's move this over a little. Okay, now we are on it, okay. Now, the next one, okay, I'm sweating persuasively. I don't want to freaking shock anything or shock myself. So let's bring this unit over here. Okay, so I had to take off my uh, my hat because my hat was basically forcing me just to perspirate everywhere. And that's not a good look. Okay, so we did have another lug nut. I don't know where the heck it went. Oh. It didn't go any. So the next process is we'll go to like an open. Okay, black. Okay, I don't want to get electrocuted, so let me touch stuff so I'm not electrocuted. Let's move this a little closer. Okay, let's fix this. Okay, let's tighten this up. I like to hand tighten all these. I know they like to all oh, need to, you know, put them really tight. Like, I don't want to blow nothing up. Okay, we have two of them connected. Now let's get now let's get the third one. Okay, we have the third one here. I'm gonna move this a little bit closer. Don't know exactly. Uh, need to move it over. You can literally see right here how it's gonna be. We can move this a cheatily, just a. Oh, okay. I'm gonna go get the last uh, one that connects. Be right back. Okay, we have a problem here. Uh, well, oh, they were actually here the whole time. Goodness grief. I walked up, felt like a mile looking for this. They're here the whole time, guys. Okay, let's just open these. We literally have eight minutes left, so we're gonna get this process done. Let's get that one in, okay. Let's take whatever electro charges I have on my hands. And okay, put that bad boy down. Boom, tighten it up. Okay, we are good to go. <sighs> We will be needing those for later, but this is how you connect two in parallel. You go from negative to positive, negative to positive, negative to positive. So instead of it being 12.8 volt for four, it's 48 volt. But you do add up, so you multiply you multiply the voltage by four, but you amp it to 280. So right now we're at 48 volt, 280, which was which would give us a totality of three, six, nine, twelve, thirteen. 14,200 watts. So that's what we have right now. 14,200 watts times three. This is gonna be a long build, guys. <laughs>